Welcome back. <clears throat> this is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number five from the October 2017, uh, sorry, uh, Core Mathematics C3-4 paper, which is um, papers that were before the new syllabus, which is like P3 and P4 for A-level. So P3 is what this question is related to. Okay, so this is an integration question related to P3. So I'll save this under my P3 uh, topic um, playlist for integration. And this first part here is an integration by uh, recognition or by reversing the chain rule. In fact, both of them are even part two because that's what is in P3. Okay, so now uh, in this question here, first of all, we have an indefinite integration. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put plus C up here just to remind myself that in the end I have to write plus C because sometimes after you've gone through all the, you know, you know, um, integration and stuff, sometimes you forget at the end to write plus C if it's an indefinite integral, right? So I'm just going to write there to remind myself that I'm going to have to put plus C at the end. Um, and then first, first, now what we're going to do is we're going to try to see how to integrate this. Now in P3, the types of integration you get do not involve things like substitution or uh, things like, um, you know, integration by parts and these type of things you'll normally have just have to deal with integration by reversing the chain rule or sometimes trig identities and integration involving trig functions so this is a classic example of reverse of the chain rule in both of these cases so here we have 3x plus 5 to the power of 9 and when we reverse the chain rule we look for something that looks something of this form so you have Outside the function, the differential of some something uh, which is multiplying um, something inside the function. Okay, so you have a function inside another function. So here you have f of x is inside of g. And outside of that function, you have the differential of what's inside that main function. So here you have something raised to the power of 9. So the first part of this, I'm dealing with this separately. This is separate. The first part of this, you have something to the power of 9. That's your main function. That's like the g part. The main function is something to the power of 9. And inside the function, you have 3x plus 5. Okay, so this is the part inside the function, which is 3x plus 5. Okay, and if you differentiate 3x plus 5, you end up with 3. So let me write that a bit bigger. So it's like you have something raised to the power of 9. 3x plus 5. All right, so the main function is something to raise to the power of 9. It's like a polynomial type of thing. Outside the function, you have a 1. Okay, outside the function, you have 1. This is 1 times 3x plus 5. Now, the differential of 3x plus 5 is 3, which has the same order as 1, means, meaning a constant. 3 is a constant. So if you differentiate 3x plus 5, if you differentiate 3x plus 5, you get a constant. What's multiplying this function? What is f dash of x multiplying this function? It's, one. it's basically 1. So because 3 and 1 are of the same order, this can be integrated using reverse of the chain rule. Same with e to the power of 5x. e to the power of 5x, you can think of it as it's like e to the power of something. So the main function is e to the power of something. That's the main function. Inside that function is your 5x. Okay, when you differentiate e to the power of something, it doesn't change. It stays the same. So you're going to have e to the power of the same thing. But then what's multiplying this function? Well, it's 1 again. And what's the differential of what's inside the function? Well, it's 5. If you differentiate 5x, you're going to get 5. So outside the function is 1. And inside the function is something of the same order when you differentiate it. Okay, so for example, if this was 3x squared plus 5, it wouldn't work. Because outside the function, you don't have an x term. If you differentiate 3x squared plus 5, you get 6x. There's no x term here. If, if this, this was a 5x squared, you'd have to have an x term on the outside for it to be the differential of what's inside the function. But as you have just a constant outside here multiplying this and a constant multiplying this, the differential of what's inside the function is 5, which is a constant like the 1. The differential of 3x plus 5 is, a, is 3, which is a constant like the 1. Therefore, we can use the reverse of the chain rule. Okay, so that's how we can understand where to use reverse of the chain rule. These are quite simple cases. So the way I like to do it, a lot of people don't do it this way. I like to do it in the following way. I write the function as it is. The main function, what's inside the function as it is, and then I, I integrate the main function. In this case, you integrate by adding one to the power and dividing by the new power. That's how a polynomial type of function integrates. Add one to the power and divide by the new power. But then we have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function. 
which is three. Okay, so that's how that differentiates. Okay, so, um, sorry, I, I didn't add one to the power. What am I doing? You add one to the power. So that becomes 10. I don't know why I said I added one to the power, and I didn't. So you add one to the power, it becomes 10. You divide by the new power, which, got, which is 10, times the differential force inside the function, which is 3. So 3x plus 5 to the power of 10 over 10 times 3. And then for this one, how does this integrate? Well, you don't add one to the power. If you, differ, if you integrate e to the power of x, it becomes e to the power of x. It doesn't change at all. So not everything integrates by adding one to the power. It de depends what type of function it is. If it's something like a polynomial type like this, raised to a power like this, okay, like it's uh, the x term raised to a power, then you add one to the power and divide by the new power. If it's something like sine x becomes, you integrate sine x, you get minus cosine x. If it's cosine x, it becomes sine x. If it's e to the power of x, it stays as e to the power of x. If it's integrating, um, yeah, so basically, basically everything has its own way of integration. Now, when you have e to the power of x, integrating that, it stays the same. So you integrate it as it normally integrates, but then you divide always by the differential of what's inside the function. So no matter what type of function it is, you integrate it as normal, like I've just done, by adding one to the power here, dividing by the new power here, just leaving it as it is. But then you also have to divide by the differential of what's inside this function. So I'm differentiating 5x, which gives me 5. And then I'm going to put my plus c, as that reminded me to do. So now I've got 3x plus 5 to the power of 10 over 30 plus e to the power of 5x over 5 plus c. And there's our answer. You can write it as 1 over 30 times this plus 1 over 5 times that if you want. That's fine. But there's the answer for 5 part 1. Okay, so that concludes that question. Now for part 2. It says, given that b is a constant greater than 2. And again, that's something that's really important. Sometimes at the end of the question, you forget about what it said. So b is a constant greater than 2. That might help us at the end of the question. So I'm going to make a note here, b is greater than 2. Okay, that's something important for us to maybe at the end of the question, we might get a couple of answers and we might not exclude any of the answers, which um, that will make us have to exclude. It says, um, you got, uh, and the integral of x over x squared plus 5 with respect to x between the limits of b and 2 is equal to lin of the square root of x. Use integration to find the value of b. Okay, now, here we have a case where you have a function which is um, in, an, in a slightly different form. It's actually the same thing as what we were doing just now when we were talking about the reverse of the chain rule. It's also reverse of the chain rule. But the difference here is on the numerator you have something which is of the form. So like you have in the denominator you have a function inside a function. Okay. Um, actually no, it's not like that. It's kind of like that in a different way but let me explain it in this way. You have a function in the denominator and on the numerator you have something which is like the differential of that function. Okay, it's like the differential of that function. Okay, so you have the numerator, if you differentiate the denominator here, you get 2x. Okay, on the numerator, you have something which is of the same order as 2x. Okay, as long as it's the same order, you can use this. Now, this will give you the lin of the modulus of f of x. It will give you something like this, of this form. That's how this um, integrates. Okay, uh, it's kind of like um, having something, if you're thinking about, you know, when you differentiate the lin of x, the lin of x, you get 1 over x. Okay, when you differentiate, when you, uh, when you differentiate, so the integral of 1 over x gives you the lin of x. Okay, or the lin of the modulus of x. We can explain that in another video why the modulus is there. But, so, you know, when you have something like of the form 1 over a function, so let's say 1 over a function. Okay, and when you, it's multiplied by the differential of what's inside that function. Okay, so that integrates to become lin of, what's inside that function okay so that's how that works so whenever you see something where the denominator is um, the differential of the denominator is the same order as the numerator so when you differentiate the denominator you get 2x the numerator is of that same order then you can use this lin to integrate it okay so how would this work now we don't have to put plus c because we have a um a definite integral this time but the way i like to set it out Many people don't do it like this, but I, I like to write it as it is. So I have x, so I keep the x there. And then I put, then I know that this is going to be lin of the modulus 
of x squared plus 5, okay, divided by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 2x, okay, and the limits are b and 2, and that's equal to the lin of root 6. We know that that's equal to the lin of root 6. Okay, so now the x cancels with the x. So whenever you have this type of reversing the chain rule and, uh, you know, you have something where there's a, like, something like not a constant here and when you differentiate that, you get the same with that, you'll see that, you'll notice that they cancel out always. And then you can be sure that you've done the right thing. So now I have a half. I'm going to take out the constant from this bracket, which is perfectly fine. I have lin of the modulus of x squared plus 5 and then you have b and 2 equals the lin of the, of, of the square root of 6. Okay, so now I can set this up. I can multiply both sides by 2, get rid of that. So I have, um, that will be lin of, and I'm going to put b in here. So if, let me first multiply by 2 and get everything nice and set up. So if I multiply by 2, in fact, what I'll do also here, just to get rid of this, I'll write this as, this is going to be lin of 6 to the power of a half. Okay, which can be a half lin 6 eventually. All right, so in fact, I'll write it up here as lin of 6 to the power of a half. Okay, which is going to be a half lin 6. That will make me have less lines. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of this half. So I have the lin of the modulus of x squared plus 5, the limits of b and 2. And if I multiply both sides by 2, I'm going to get this is going to be lin of 6. Okay, that, may, that will make life a bit easier. Now I'm going to put b into here, so I have lin of the modulus of b squared plus 5 minus the lin of the modulus of 2 squared plus 5 equals the lin of 6. I don't need the modulus sign because this is positive. Uh, of course, if you square b, b is greater than 2 anyway, so this is definitely going to be positive. So I have lin of um, b squared plus 5 minus the lin of 9 equals the lin of 6. So I can use the subtraction law here. I can combine these two because they're both of, the, both of the same base, lin, which is log to the base e. So this will become b squared plus 5 over 9 equals the lin of 6. Of course, now, if the lin of something is equal to the lin of something, those two somethings must be the same. All right, so b squared plus 5 over 9 must be the same as 6. Therefore, we can say b squared plus 5 equals 6 times 9, which is 54. So b squared is 54 minus 5, which is 49. So b is equal to the square root of 49, the plus or minus square root of 49, which is plus or minus 7. And we know that as, and that's why it's important to note that down, as b is greater than 2, and the question says find the value of b, does it say values? So we know there's only one answer. That means we can't accept b equals negative 7. As b is greater than 2, then b cannot equal negative 7. Therefore, b is equal to 7. And there's the answer for this question. Okay, part 2. All right. So that's the answer to this um, part of the question here. Uh, so this is a typical question from P3 now, which is all about reverse of the chain rule. This one, um, uh, you know, when you have something times, in this case, you have something inside a function. So you have f of x instead of inside of g of x. You have 3x plus 5 instead of something to the power of 9. But it's multiplied by the differential of what's inside the function. So it's multiplied by the constant 1 here. And the same with this one. Inside the function, you have 5x. The main function is e to the power of 5x multiplied again by 1. And um, so it's important for you to understand how to deal with that. So for example, if it was x times 3x plus 5 to the power of 9, that is not... You can't say that's the reverse of the chain rule because when you differentiate this, you don't get x. Differentiate this, you get 3. But if this was 3x squared, you get 6x, which is the same order as x, and that would work. You'd be able to work with that in terms of um, integrating that. Okay, so you have to understand how to use the reverse of the chain rule. Okay, it's very important. Um, otherwise, you could do it by substitution, which works, but it's a lot, a lot of hassle. If you, can, if, you can, if you can recognize the reverse of the chain rule, that makes life way easier for you in in these cases all right so there's the answers to this question other questions from this particular paper october 2017 c34 from international a level can be found in the playlist that will appear over here other questions from integration of p3 will be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can find other videos which um, relate 
to um, like uh, you can find um, how to use sorry my channel in a in an efficient manner. Okay, finding what you need quickly by watching the video that will appear. The link will appear over here that will show you how to use my channel properly, finding the index documents for it. Thank you for watching and see you soon.